I'm Destin Harrison, and you're listening to the Gig Salad Green Room Interviews. This particular episode resonates with me on a personal level. When I was growing up, my mom gave me a copy of Journey's Greatest Hits to listen to, and it was the CD that I think started my love affair with music. I used to climb up in this tree in our front yard in the middle of our neighborhood and drown out the entire rest of the world with a pair of headphones and listen to that CD on repeat for hours at a time. More than a decade later, I got the honor of interviewing one of the masterminds behind the material on that CD. Among many, many other things, Jonathan Cain is credited with writing and performing on Journey's hits like Don't Stop Believing and Faithfully. That iconic piano intro that gets the crowd going when Don't Stop Believing starts to play That's him. Pretty cool, right? Earlier this year, Jonathan was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and he just recently released a new album called Unsung Noel, which includes a few Christmas classics and a whole lot more original material, just in time for the holiday season. So we're here with the legendary Mr. Jonathan Kane. Jonathan, how are you? I'm doing great. Yes, sir. How are you? Doing very well. Thank you. So Unsung Noel, can you fill us in on what we can expect from that album? I was leading worship a couple of years ago for Christmas at the church, a new Destiny Christian Center, and I, I dropped a couple of new songs that I had written. Um, of course, Paula... My wife is so transparent and such a teacher, you know, that I asked her about the true meaning of Emmanuel, and then she explained it to me. With us is God. God with us, you know, um, is the translation. And I just thought it was beautiful. And uh, that led me to more, you know, sort of seeking out the true Christmas, you know. So I was looking for uh, mysteries, um, and, you know, sort of, I found that there were, like, these amazing miracles, you know. There's the angels that come to Mary and Joseph, you know. And, and I, I, you know, I always heard the angels in Christmas songs, but I never specifically did I realize that an angel came to visit Mary and said, do not be afraid, you have found favor with God, you know. Um, and um, so I started thinking about, it's almost like in a movie, you know. Can I put a listener and take them on a on a nativity journey, you know, through the Bible, and and that's kind of what my my focus was, very cinematic, um, just just looking at Christmas at the magnitude of the miracle. And I understand this isn't your typical Christmas album. You know, you've got like the normal Christmas songs that everybody covers. You went a layer deeper on all of this material, right? I tried to. I I wrote ten original songs. Um, all dealing with different, you know, things. I, I look at Joseph and Mary being the pillars that were so important for Jesus' younger years, you know, and uh, nobody gives them any credit. And I had to lift them up and praise them because when I look at it as, as a father, I have to look at it like, wow, you know, pretty amazing. Um, so things like that and the star of Bethlehem that's talked about, I... I found online that it was this supernova that the astronomers have no answer for, you know, and that it's a mystery, another mystery that 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 was unfolded, you know, in in my in my studies. But but it's just the I want people to realize that Christmas is not a ritual, you know. We observe, you know, it is the birth of Christ, and, and it should be lifted up and, and just revered, you know, more than. They don't make it a ritual. We we all sort of take it for granted, and the more the deeper I got into it, especially the sermon that I found, "The Heart of Christmas" by Billy Graham, who declared the true meaning of Christmas of salvation, the message of salvation, and the redemption uh, of the human race, and and it's huge. You know, it's just a mighty thing, and that really inspired me. Billy's ninety nine. I guess he's still still kicking it. I saw his sister last week at a women's conference and uh he is uh, he's still you know alive and not getting around uh but you know she still reads him the word and you know so a lot of this came from you know that sermon and and that 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 seed that takeaway uh really f- propelled me into you know making the album and i did most of the album uh production on the road in my hotel room on my laptop believe it or not oh wow in uh, 
of course, we went in and did all our tracks. And uh, But I even sang, I don't know, probably half the album in hotel rooms. You're listening to the Gig Salad Green Room Interviews. Let's say you're getting ready for prom and you find out that your prom date is really, really into birds. Like, really into birds. And you decide that the most reasonable way to impress him is to have your hair styled to look like there's a bird on your head. Well, that's the situation Trish from San Jose found herself in, so she went to gigsalad.com and we helped her find a hairstylist who was able to help her idea take flight. Visit gigsalad.com to find out how we can help you book something awesome. Gig Salad. Gig Salad. Gig Salad. You're listening to the Gig Salad Green Room Interviews. I like this salad. Everybody upon everybody is going to know you from the band Journey. Sure. So how did you first become a part of Journey? Um, you know, it was, it was the babies, you know. I was in the babies, um, and they had us uh, opening up for them, and that was really how it happened, you know. Um, you know, they saw me perform, and uh, after the tour... They just called me up one summer and said, will you join? And John had, uh, John Waite, who was our lead singer, injured himself, you know, in an accident and said, you know, take the gig. So I did. Herbie Herbert was their manager and they had a road manager, Pat Morrow, who dealt really with the babies a lot. You know, he was sort of, you know, our boss out there and (laughs) John Waite drove him crazy half the time, jumping on the monitors. He said, please don't get on the monitors and... John would stand on him and side fills and, you know, it was just an ongoing battle with Pat Morrow. And Pat was the one that made the call. And so he called me and said, uh, you know, I've got good news. The band has chosen you, you know, as his successor for Greg Raleigh. And, you know, Greg is, you know, happy with you taking over. And Neil and Steve can't wait for you to come up and write. And I think I dropped the phone at some point, you know, <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> Understandably. You know, the babies were done. John Lennon had been shot, you know, in New York, and they, there was a moratorium and really no chance of, of our, our our music making it, you know. We needed that airplay to survive, and we weren't getting it. So, uh, And strangely enough, our single was called Turn and Walk Away. <laughs> <laughs> That's some irony for you. Yeah, watch what you write. It just might happen. Uh, so that's kind of how, you know, it, it went and I, I was finishing up something with, uh, the ex-wife, she was a singer, songwriter. So I, I said, let me finish these demos and I'll, uh, I'll come up. So we started, you know, pretty, pretty quickly in, uh, the late, uh, early spring there. So you went from turn and walk away to don't stop believing, which, has to have one of the most iconic piano intros of any song ever. So what's Don't Stop Believing about from a writer's perspective? What did you put into that song? I'll tell you, it, it, it just, it's the permission to dream, really. Um, to me, it's a combination of, you know, Steve, Steve and I both had similar experiences, you know, rejections and, you know, trying to work our way through the nightclub scenario and then, getting into the studio and making real music and then the rejection and, you know, sort of looking at the music business from the outside, looking in, you know. And so then it hit me that, you know, when we were creating it, it sounded <clears throat> like Sunset Boulevard, you know, where I I kind of hung out for eight years. Like I lived in Laurel Canyon right above Sunset when all of this amazing stuff was going on. I mean, L.A. was the hotbed of rock and roll at that point. Elton John was at the Troubadour. The Eagles had just played the Santa Monica. You know, you got David Bowie and Iggy Stardust. Um, it was the glitter days, you know. Uh, the Feather Boas, uh, Johnny Thunder and the New York Dolls, you know. Uh, quite a menagerie of uh, different styles all coming together in one city. And then when Neil had that little lick you know that digga 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 i said it sounds like a train what if it was you know that song midnight georgia midnight train to georgia i said what if it's like the midnight train going anywhere maybe it was going to hollywood and he's like yeah (laughs) so that's really what we were trying to create and oddly enough it was you know wanting to be a success in the music business and wanting to pursue your dream and getting the opportunity to 
and you've got to get on that midnight train, <laughs> you know, uh, or you'll never get it. And, and it's just like I said, I think it's the permission. Um, a lot of people get stuck, you know, and they need that permission to go take the step and move forward. You know, you're not stuck, you know, and you have a choice. You can get out of here and you can choose another life. You're not this, especially when you're young, you know, you don't have to stay in Johnstown, Pennsylvania if you don't love it. Right. Um, so nothing against Johnstown, but there are places, you know, that you can you can go and, and create. And, and for me, I knew I had to be in Hollywood. So I left Chicago. Steve left uh, the San Joaquin Valley, Fresno area, you know, to come to L.A. to make it. And, you know, he got pretty close and and just like me, had his setbacks. And so we wrote that really about overcoming those setbacks. So what do you hope people take away from that song? If you could just summarize one bullet point that you hope people get out of the song, Don't Stop Believing, what do you hope that is? Um, don't get stuck, you know. Uh, don't get stuck in your situation. God has another door for you to open. You know, sometimes the battles lead to the blessings. And that's what I want people to realize, that, you know, as long as you keep the faith and, and stay on track, you know, and battle through all the adversities, um, there's, there's greatness waiting. You have a destiny, and it's up to you to recognize it, and so you can't quit on it. Well, what about the song Faithfully? Because you were one of the primary writers on that song, correct? That's right. It's a one and only journey song that, I, that only one person has written. Um, you know, it was a God moment. I have to give it to him on that because he showed me what it was. And uh, there was an urgency to it. You know, I started it writing on the bus. I was sitting out uh, the night before uh, uh, watching the crew take down the stage and thinking they, they probably are sacrificing so much for being out here for us, you know. And they're, they're doing their job, right? Uh, but they're missing their family. They're missing their loved ones, just like we are. So we're like all in this boat together, really, all of us. And so I thought, man, I'd love to write a song that everybody could say, man, that's about, that's about me, you know. And that was just God kind of working in the grateful place, you know, that I was at at the time. And so I, I just, you know, started with the lyric, Highway Run into the Midnight Sun, and I'm on the bus going down up the, up the state to New York, upstate New York. Wheels going round, you're on my mind, you know. Restless heart, sleep alone tonight, wondering where I am without you. And I stopped, and I took the napkin, got in the hotel room, looked at the napkin the next morning, and I went, <laughs> this is great, you know, I'm going to finish this. And then the Lord showed me, and being a part ain't easy on a, ain't always easy on a love affair, you know, two strangers learn to fall in love again. I get the joy of rediscovering you. And I didn't know what the title was. I, that's the one time I really didn't know what the title was. I was working my way through the lyric. Oh, babe, you stand by me. I'm forever yours. And I just went, that's faithfully. And, you know, it was a road song. Uh, but it was one from the heart. And it, it, I probably wrote it in 40 minutes. Yeah, it took 40 minutes to finish it. There's a great piano at the, the Performing Arts Center we were playing at. And I found a 10-foot concert grand, 9-foot concert grand. And everybody was eating dinner. And I was in there with my napkin going, wow, this feels good. <laughs> I'm going to remember this. So I did. And then I did a demo uh, for Keith Olsen when I was working on my ex-wife album. And he said, you have any songs? And, I, and he, he said, I'll record them for you, you know. And so I played a couple of tunes, Allies, that I, it ended up being on the heart record. And then, of course, Faithfully. And then he called me a month later, and Keith said, man, I played your song for the girls, Nancy and Ann Wilson, and made them cry. And you got, it, you got something there, you know. So when it came time to make Faithfully, um, to make Frontiers, the producer called me the last night and said, you know, do you got a song? you got a ballad? And I said, well, I have this thing I wrote on the road, but, you know, nobody else is involved. It's just my song. And he said, bring it. We're going to cut it. <laughs> so we did. Three takes later, that's what you're here. That's how good Journey was. Oh, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. I'm so glad you did it. Yeah, no, me too. Uh, but it was Mike Stone, 
you know, and he believed in me. And, you know, I, I put that, set that song aside wondering what I was going to do with it, you know. And when Perry heard it, he went, okay, you just got to let me do my thing with it. Of course, I would, you know, and I did. So how did your career go from the days when you were in Journey to where it is right now? How did you end up as a Christian solo performer? Um, I just felt like it was time to to pay it forward, the blessings forward, just to give give back to the Lord, you know. Um, I had f- felt so blessed in my life, and I saw Paula's transparency for God, and it really was contagious. The way she loves God is just, you know, I, I've i never seen such passion and conviction, you know, in somebody's life, and she really cares about the kingdom of God, and, you know, she she taught me how to be a, a disciple, you know, instead of just a follower, you know, it's it's a bigger, it's a bigger commitment, and and I wanted it. I was missing it in my life, you know. You know, ten years ago, I was just searching. I wasn't happy, you know. Um, <clears throat> and and she had the word for me that you know that I I didn't need to run from the Lord anymore. That that I was worthy, you know, and I was good. Uh, and He wanted His son back. And of course, I loved Jesus when I was a I was a kid. I declared I was going to be a priest, you know. So God has a sense of humor. He says, uh, <laughs> you know. Boy, they want to be a priest marries the preacher. That's how it ends. And so he had that destiny for me all along. So it, it isn't that far of a stretch. It's all the mess in the middle like we all have. But our God is a good God. And um, he, he comes back and, and, and he loves us all. Uh, and we are all worthy. So as we wrap up here, what's one piece of advice that you would give to an aspiring performer who's trying to get to where you are in your career right now? Um, just to be original and not to be afraid of, of the norm. You know, like, I, I probably broke a lot of rules when I made my, my Christmas album, you know, and I think today you have to be, you know, internet savvy. You have to be a maverick. Um, you can't play it safe. There is no playing it safe. So, you know, uh, don't, don't just take the easy way, you know, do it the way you, you think it should be done. That's why I didn't want a label deal on this project because I felt like it would put me in a box, you know. So make the music you want to make and, and you know, worry about where God's taken you. And, it, it, you know, that, that's what we can't worry about what people think of us, you know, uh, so much. And it's easier for me to say because, you know, I, I make this money playing in Journey and, and all that stuff. But still, when, I, when it comes to artist integrity, I think it's important to be unique and original. And, uh, and don't try to copy what someone else is doing. Just um, do it your way. So how can our listeners keep up with you and your work? Well, I'm uh, all over social media. I'm Jonathan Kane Music uh, at Facebook. Uh, I, I check in there a couple times a week. Uh, then there's uh, Twitter is the Jonathan Kane, And then, of course, Instagram is uh, Jonathan Kane Music. Uh, so um, I'm pretty pretty present there and you know i'm uh, i'm always trying to make a difference doing video and you know we're reaching out uh, to help the kids and make a wish we're helping uh, i'm doing a, a charity benefit uh for the uh, special needs kids from high hopes uh it's a beautiful school in nashville um that helps the children with autism and and those kind of the appeal debilitating diseases so um i'm doing that and you know just trying to do god's work and i'm on the road with uh paula uh, a lot uh we she preaches and i sing and i play and i minister in my music so i found a new ministry um and my music soars in another place in another uh, smaller arena <laughs> very cool well jonathan kane thanks so much for joining us All right, thank you for having me. Be blessed and uh, happy holidays, sir. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Gig Salad Green Room Interviews. Don't forget to pick up a copy of Jonathan Cain's new album, Unsung Noel. And if you think of anyone else who you'd like to hear us interview, be sure to let us know in the comments section. And as always, don't forget to visit gigsalad.com to find out how we can help you book something awesome. For everyone here in the Gig Salad Green Room, I'm Destin Harrison. Thanks for listening. In a world full of